Since Monday, the national average for gas dropping by three cents. Yesterday's average at $3.81 a gallon. In the meantime, California has declared a grid emergency, warning about blackouts potentially coming amid record high temperatures expected over the Labor Day weekend. Joining us right now to talk about the president's energy policy is Senator Bill Cassidy. And Senator, it's always good to have you. Why don't we just start talking about the, the drop that we've seen in oil prices and in gasoline prices recently. Um, it's been significant, uh, just as it was pretty significant on the way up. But this is uh, something that the markets are kind of watching and waiting to see what happens. What, what do you attribute the lower oil prices to? I can think of three reasons right off the top of my head. The rig count has increased by about 50 percent year over year. And those are on private lands, but there's more oil being produced here in the U.S., number one. Number two, we're through the summer driving season, and a lot of people canceled their vacations reportedly because they couldn't afford gas. So, so that's a good thing, um, uh, a demand destruction, if you will. And so, uh, so I think that there's a couple of reasons. One's kind of good. One's not, maybe not so good. And then summer driving season's over in general. Let me add one more to the list. That's uh, the looming potential slowdown. I mean, every time China shuts things down because of COVID, every time we have concerns about a recession coming up, that seems to take uh, some of the price out of uh, any of these energy, any of these energy commodities as well. Um, what do you think we're in for, let's say, longer term? Where, where are things kind of setting up, especially as you watch what Putin is doing right now in terms of cutting the supply of natural gas to Europe? Yeah, so I, I, the interesting thing is, is I think the American people are going to get whipsawed. Okay, so inflation was really going after them, but now the Fed is ratcheting up interest rates, and so the economy is going to slow down. So although we look at an indicator by itself and we say that's good news, if you look at it in context, it's just going to be the consumer, the, the people I represent, being buffeted one way or the other. We speak about gasoline prices coming down, but natural gas prices continue up. And natural gas prices means that people are paying more at the, uh, at, at, at the utility bill, if you will. But it also means that all those byproducts, fertilizer, for example, coming from natural gas, fertilizer being an input of, of, of grocery stores, uh, you know, you follow that, is going to continue to be a little bit higher. So I think if we're just speaking about the person at home balancing their checkbook, uh, they're, they're going to feel it one way or the other for the next few months, six years, maybe uh, six months, or maybe even 12 months. Senator, you serve on the Energy Committee. What would you like to see done from national policy from that perspective? There is so much that can be done to streamline permitting of energy projects, renewable and traditional. There was uh, somebody who spoke of, of a permit that she had applied for for a super major in the Gulf of Mexico. They were going to drill in four different directions off of an existing platform. And she said 12 months after that was granted, she would be sending oil and natural gas to the shore to be processed. Uh, that, she applied in January, and they still have not received their permit. Now, we could align that. I call it the Operation Warp Speed for energy, uh, not, just for, not just as we did for, for the vaccine to bring something that would take three years to, to bring it to put in someone's arms in 10 months. Let's do that for, for resources. By the way, it can also be for renewables. When you see California going to um, all electric vehicles by 2035, they don't have the grid for that. They are nowhere close to the grid for that. And California is notoriously for delays in permitting. They've set them up for failure. Let's set ourselves up for success. What's the funding that needs to go into that? So the funding has been out there, we, both in the Trump administration through the Biden administration, a uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill, for example, which I was a part of. There is a lot of money that is out there. The issue is, is that some of that, so much of it gets chewed up in, in the permitting process. Um, so, and by the way, some of which we're permitting would bring revenue to the federal government. Think of permitting off the shore of Louisiana to, to allow those uh, four different wells to be drilled, that brings more royalty payments to the United States government. I think the money would be there. We would find extra money if required. Senator Cassidy, thank you. We will have